10 things I wish every new Blender user knew. So if you don't know, uh, Blender comes with add-ons, which you can enable. You can download these from the internet, like a add-on I have made from my Gumroad, or you can just use the pre-installed add-ons in Blender. To do this, you can go over to Edit, Preferences, and go over to Add-ons, and there you have all your add-ons that you can enable. Most of these are disabled by default, but some of them are enabled, like the export methods of the FBX and GLB. But here are some I think you should enable right now. This add-on gives you a lot more options for adding meshes. Sometimes in my videos I add in a round cube or something, and this is the simple answer for that. And this brings us to the second add-on, which is Extra Object Curve, which basically is just the same thing as the mesh version, but this just gives you a lot more curves. This add-on is incredibly useful for modeling, and when I was starting out in Blender, I sometimes wished I could do something like make a grid or a circle while I'm modeling, and this add-on lets you do that, uh, and a lot more as well. This is probably the most important add-on you turn on right away. Every time I am on a new PC, I immediately notice that I don't have Node Wrangler enabled. I probably use Node Wrangler every single day for the simple purpose of just previewing nodes. ANT Landscapes is a really great add-on for making quick and easy terrains in Blender. And I used to really love it starting out in Blender since it has a lot of control. Uh, but nowadays I choose to make uh, my own landscapes. But this is still a really good option for you if you don't want to do that. Probably just as important as the Note Wrangler add-on. If you don't have this enabled, I don't know what you're doing. And the name says it all. It just lets you import images as planes. And these are all add-ons that you can enable right now without having to download anything. Daily I get comments asking how I adjust my operations after applying them, like a bevel or something. And the simple answer to that is operator menus. In Blender where you do something or anything, a menu appears in the bottom left of the 3D viewport and you can click this to open the menu and then adjust your last operation there. Every operation you do goes through one of these operator menus. So keep this in mind, if you apply something, you don't have to do it again. You can just open that menu right there. Every time people ask me how to do a specific thing, I give a very specific answer. Most of the time those people can't find what I'm actually talking about. Uh, so right now we're just going to go over the most important uh, window names. So here in Blender, uh, you have this 3D viewport, which is just your basic scene, which is where the uh, default cube is at. Uh, but you can also go over here and press this button and you have all these different uh, menus. The ones I uh, reference a lot are the 3D viewport, the timeline, the properties, which is this panel right here, uh, the outliner, which is uh, this one, and you can just uh, find it here. So if I ever give you instructions in the comments or on my Discord server, you can uh, open this menu and just look to find where I'm telling you to go. And the outliner, you also have some more properties like the render properties, the output properties, and things like that. You can just hover over this and see them. In my videos, I kind of speed run snapping 3D cursor, uh, but that's what happens when you use the pie menu so often. How to use this is just shift S and then a pie menu appears, and then you can choose to snap the 3D cursor to your active object or the other way around or to the grid or something else. And this is really useful if you want uh, snap objects to your 3D cursor. So I really suggest you uh, look into learning this so you can use Blender at its full potential. Something I wish I knew on my very first day of Blender is that you can do math in every single value box. Anything in math works within Blender. You can also use drivers, which simply put is just a dynamic value based on the frame you're currently on. You can combine this with the previous tip and divide it to slow it down or multiply to speed it up. If you are modeling with a reference that uses a different measurement system, you can type it in in the value slider instead of having to go to Google search and Blender will convert it for you. Now that's pretty cool. Blender takes time to master. Sometimes I'm stunned by people who say Blender is hard to learn. Yes, of course, it's complex and it takes time to master just like everything else in life. Uh, Blender is the most complicated piece of software I've ever used and I still don't know everything. Uh, people who have 10 years of experience in Blender uh, haven't seen everything the software has to offer yet and that's perfectly fine. It's incredible to see that a free program offers you so much content that you just can't get through it in 10 years. It's getting uh, expanded so frequently that it's hard to keep up even. Uh, but I think with enough effort anyone can use Blender. Blender is on Steam. Okay, uh, this is something I wish I knew before I started using Blender. I suggested that you start using it on Steam so you can keep track of how long you've spent with something I really regret not doing. Blender offers free project files. Sometimes I'm amazed that people don't know this, uh, but you can check out how uh, Blender is used by different people. And they are also used to benchmark PC performance. And you can find it by going to blender.org slash download slash demo dash files. 
what I see now and what I also did when I started is only sticking to Blender when it comes to renders. Some don't even use the compositor and just upload it raw, which I'm guilty of sometimes uh, still. Uh, so my tip to you is try taking your renders into different programs where you can edit and color grade your render. This will really improve the final result. And that was already the video. So I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something. And if you're a beginner, please tell me what your favorite tip is and something you didn't know before watching this video. And I hope to see you in the next one. Goodbye.